everybody welcome back to the channel if you are new hello welcome I'm Kendra today's video I think is going to be pretty exciting I am going to be looking at my birth slash natal I think it's called chart which is all to do with astrology I'm not an expert on astrology at all but I have been watching videos on it and it is so interesting to me just I don't know how we're actually made up of a bunch of signs so, you know, everybody knows, oh, what's your sign? And everybody has one sign that they know they are. Some people don't relate to that sign that well, and that's because you're made up of a bunch of different signs. So the one that we know the most is our sun sign, but there's like our moon sign, there's like Venus, Mars, all the different planets and stuff like that. So her birth charts are kind of like snowflakes. They're all unique. And so that makes a lot more sense, right? Because the horoscopes that you see in like magazines and stuff like oh my gosh you're gonna find the love of your life this month and i don't know you're gonna find some new adventures like no that's all bs <laughs> That's total BS. But this like birth chart thing, this is like the real deal on astrology, not that horoscope stuff. So, and I guess you, you don't have to believe in the astrology either, but I don't know. I find it really interesting and cool. And we're gonna see if I actually relate to what this website tells me that my characteristics are based on my birth chart. I'm going to be linking the website down below. So if you wanna find your birth chart, you can go ahead and do that. I'm also gonna put a little twist on this video. So it's not just me reading characteristics and seeing if they're like me. I am also gonna try and put some visuals with this to make it a little more entertaining. I don't know. I'm just gonna see what happens. So let's get into this video and figure out my birth chart and see if it's more accurate than just one sign. <laughs> The website I'm going to is astro.cafeastrology.com. It's going to ask you for like your name or a nickname, I think gender, um, the place you were born, the time you were born, and the day you were born. So you do have to know those things or at least relatively close because it's based off of when and where and what day you were born. Like these birth charts, they look so cool. They have all these lines on them from like where you were. I'll pop one up right here. Ta-da, here's a birth chart. <laughs> Let's go and find out what it says about me. I'm like exposing myself of who I really am. This is... Oh, it's kind of a lot. Okay, let's go. My sun sign is a cancer and I actually really relate to my sun sign. Uh, I'm really emotional, which is like the number one thing they say about cancers. <laughs> Sensitive, but also like really caring and friendly and stuff. So yeah, and then my moon sign is a Capricorn. Another big one I think people talk about is the like ascending sign which is a Leo. And then I have all these other planets. There's some other stuff on this that I don't really know what it means. So I don't know, we're gonna skip to where it talks about my personality. So each like planet represents something and whatever sign you are correlates to what that represents, if that makes sense. So the sun represents vitality, a sense of individuality and outward shining creative energy. So it's gonna kind of tell you how you act in those aspects depending what sign you are. I am not going to be reading every single description of every planet because oh my gosh that would be a long video. So I'm just gonna kind of choose a few and read them. Sun in Cancer. Sun and Cancer natives have a strong survival instinct. They are protective of those they care about and of themselves too. Yeah I would say I would say so. That sounds pretty right. They are often quite reticent about sharing their inner selves to the rest of the world and are often caught up in reminisce. Reticent means like not really sharing that much. I had to just look that word up. But yeah, I'd say I love to reminisce on things a lot. <laughs> Cancers have a reputation for moodiness, although this trait is most evident when the moon is in Cancer. I don't know. I feel like I'm, I'm kind of sensitive, so maybe that goes with my moodiness. I don't know. Cancer needs roots. They resist change to an extent and concern themselves about being secure and safe in most everything they do. Uh... Yeah, I don't know. I have a hard time with change sometimes, but I feel like a lot of people do. I don't know. Cancers can be quite intrigued by objects with history attached to them, antiques, photos, souvenirs, and the like. <laughs> oh my gosh. 
That's so true. Cancer is a very sensitive sign and they don't always appreciate it when you are blunt with them. Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, I'd say so. Their reactions to hurt will depend on how thick a shell they have developed. Oh my gosh, that's so true. This is so weird. This is like really weird. <laughs> because like sometimes I can take when people are blunt, but other times I can't like depending. Oh, that's weird. Most cancers react by withdrawing or retreating. Yeah. I didn't think this would be like that accurate, damn. Some have developed an ability to manipulate others to get what they want. I don't think I manipulate people. Oh my gosh. <laughs> they avoid direct confrontations almost as a rule. Um, you know, I'd say that I don't love confrontation. Uh, yeah, I don't really remember when I've been like, all right, let me confront this person. Cancers are in fact quite yielding and soft when you have them in the right mood. A plus to that. <laughs> they are one of the more hospital signs, hospitable? I said hospital. <laughs> They're one of the more hospitable signs of the zodiac. Sure, they can be touchy and indirect, <laughs> but they are also very dependable, caring souls. See, I said that I felt like I related a lot with my sun sign. So like that, all that description, feeling like I really connected with it, that makes sense. That's, that's crazy, actually. I didn't think it would be that accurate. I feel like there was only like one or two things that I was like, I don't know. Let's move on to my moon sign, which is a Capricorn. And the moon represents the emotional responses, unconscious predestination, and the self-image. Oh gosh, okay. Being useful and productive are basic needs for lunar Capricorns. Yeah because they generally keep their emotions under check. Moon and Capricorn people come across as competent people. I mean, I guess, I mean, I'm really emotional, but I, I try to keep my emotions in check, I guess. However, tur oh, okay, there we go. There we go. However turbulent their emotions may be under the surface, lunar Capricorns keep cool headed and they come across as steady and reliable people. Okay, that, sound, that sounds better. <laughs> The position of the moon suggests a desire for clear boundaries and realistic goals. Not much for taking risks in life, lunar Capricorns look for safety and security in most everything they do. I'd say that's pretty true. I don't know about safety and security. I mean, doesn't everyone kind of want safety and security? I don't know, but yeah, taking risks. I've taken more in the past year, but I'm definitely not like a risk taker. Most of them respect authority and tradition and many are planning well ahead of the rest of us. You likely won't have to remind them to protect their interests, plan for old age, or keep fallback money in their bank accounts. These things come naturally to them. I mean, I'd say so. I like to plan, but I also get like more worried about the future when I try and plan for it. So I do like to plan for it, but how successful am I at that? Mm, I don't know. Calm, cool, and collected. These words sum up moon and Capricorn natives well. I mean, sometimes. Messy emotions and leaky souls are a bit frightening for most with this position of the moon. Truth is they can have plenty of mood swings and some dark emotions now and then, or now and again. Lunar Capricorns are often quite hard on themselves and would benefit from letting their guard down once in a while. Gosh, I'm really exposing myself because I, <laughs> I relate to all this so much. They quickly garner reputations of being mountains of strength and they easily hide their sensitivity behind a sarcastic manner. I don't know, a mountain of strength, that's a pretty big title to like live up to. You may have read that Moon and Capricorn natives are a bit cold and calculating. The fact is they are unlikely to be any less emotional than the other 11 sign positions of the moon. They simply aren't comfortable letting go when it comes to emotions. They keep their emotions under control. See, I don't know about that. I feel like I let out my emotions, but I could also see how that could be accurate because there are like some instances where I do try and keep them like under check like it says. Wherever Capricorn is found in the chart, there's a desire for structure and control. Capricorn is a sign of organization and efficient management. So when the moon is found in the sign, the world of emotions are well managed and handled in an efficient and practical manner. At the heart of lunar Capricorns is a powerful need to feel worthwhile in the real world. Ah, 
that's kind of deep. <laughs> There's a basic need for respectability and a big attachment to the world of the senses. Lunar Capricorns put a lot of value in all things tangible and real. And perhaps more than anything, they need to be respected by others in order to feel secure. Hmm, interesting. So that was all the moon. I feel like there was more in this one that was not as accurate, I felt, as my sun sign, but there was still a lot of accuracy. So yeah, let's look at Mercury, Mercury in Leo. It says Mercury represents communication. So she wants to know the bottom line and is good at scoping out a situation and finding answers to problems. In fact, she's a problem solver and will spend a lot of time helping others solve problems if need be. I do like doing that actually. Very friendly and usually positive, she can be charming in a warm way. Enthusiastic speaker speaks with authority and sincerity. I don't know, am I speaking with authority and sincerity, guys? <laughs> Great sense of organization. I do love to organize. Playful, likes to take risks in jest and for amusement. I don't know about that. Uh, like I said, I am not usually a risk taker. Oh, and they said some of these can like clash with each other. Uh, I forget why it said that, but like that, I feel like clashes with the thing that was in cancer in the, in the sun for cancer, saying that like, I don't like to take risks and now this is saying I take risks. So I forget why it said it clashes sometimes, but let's move on. Might sometimes come across too strongly or offend sensitive folk with a somewhat authoritative tone. Aw, I hope not. I don't know. Okay, let's go to Venus, which represents an interest for emotions and values, exchange and sharing with others. And I am a Leo. And this is really long. I'm going to go, they also have short descriptions at the bottom, which I haven't been reading, but I'm gonna just go down there. Sincere, frank and warm affections. She is full of tenderness, high hopes in love. She likes to live and satisfy her passions to the fullest, can be possessive and might even seduce for the sake of seducing to prove to herself that she is attractive. <laughs> what? <laughs> Very proud in love and warm-hearted and generous with loved ones. Hmm. I don't know. That one's kind of weird. Let's take a look at Mars. And Mars represents the desire for action and physical energy. And I'm a Libra in Mars. Mars in Libra natives often reflect about things before they act. <laughs> yeah. I think a lot. Like, I think of all the scenarios before I take an action. I'm like, oh, this could happen. This could happen. This could happen. If I decide this, this can happen. If I do this yeah overthinking 101 decisiveness is not their strong point <laughs> yeah but they do eventually get things done true many people with this position procrastinate generally because they feel the need to weigh all of the alternatives before taking action huh i've never thought that i was a procrastinator but i guess if you're talking about like decision making i mean i take a minute to make a decision sometimes if that's procrastinating i don't know life isn't always fair <laughs> as Mars in Scorpio would say, but Mars in Libra will seldom accept this notion. These natives can easily get caught up in defending themselves and others. Although their overall goal is to live peacefully, they stir others up with their desire to balance everything. Still, they always play innocent when they are challenged and can generally charm the birds out of the trees to win your favor. Passive aggressiveness is practically the hallmark of this position. Yeah, I can be kind of passive of aggressive at times. <laughs> They don't want to look like they are ever being mean or unfair, but aggression has to go somewhere. Too often the result in sneaky behavior and subterfuge, which is deceit used in order to achieve one's goals. On the other hand, some Mars and Libra people turn the Mars energy into action and they fight for justice and fairness in the world. I like that. <laughs> On the upside, Mars and Libra people are adept at predicating when problems and discord will occur well in advance. They know how to compromise and are excellent at conflict management. I mean, I try to compromise. Sometimes I don't think I'm great at compromising. I try to be the best I can be though, I guess. But this last one is called like an ascendant, which I guess I don't really know what this is, but that's okay. I know it was listed with the planets, so we're just gonna read it. <laughs> I'm ascendant in Scorpio. Scorpio ascendant people have a lot of presence. There is something about them that tells the world that they are not to be pushed around. Their manner commands respect and in some cases 
fear. What? I don't know about that. If I have like a huge presence when I walk in the room, I don't feel like that, but okay. Scorpio rising people can be quiet or loud, but they always seem powerful and determined. Okay, that sounds a little more accurate. You either love or hate Scorpio rising people. They are rarely people who go through life unnoticed. I don't know, I feel pretty unnoticed sometimes. In fact, some of them are confused when faced with the fact that they get such strong reactions from people. They seem to look right through people seen through superficiality. Okay, yeah, I can tell when people are being fake. This can be quite intimidating to some and intriguing to others. Scorpio rising people in their dealings with others look for answers by reading between the lines. I think that kind of goes with like me trying to figure stuff out, you know? Surface details are discarded when they are getting a feel for people and situations around them. I mean, I feel like you gotta consider both like the surface stuff and the things in between the lines, but I don't know. Scorpio rising people value their privacy so much it can border on paranoia. They have a strong need to control their environment and are experts at strategy. Eh, maybe. Rarely people who will blow their chances with impatience. They plan out their moves carefully and deliberately, relying on their awesome ability to feel out others in situations. I feel like that's kind of accurate there. Like I usually am really careful with things in situations where I have to kind of feel them out and see, I don't know. I think that's more of just being aware of your surroundings and situations. Scorpio rising natives are drawn to down to earth natural partners. Reliability in their partner is very important. They generally look for complete commitment and have little patience with flighty partners. Like I said, there are a lot of different things on your birth chart and I could read a bunch more stuff, but I'm just going to leave it there. I think overall, it seemed like I related a lot to what they were saying. At least the ones that I read, it seemed like a lot of it was accurate or like halfway ac accurate at least. Like, yes, there was some that I was like, mm, maybe not. But overall, pretty freaking accurate, which is kind of weird and really cool. I think it's really cool at least. I don't know. I always felt so connected with my sun sign. So I think that that made me really interested in astrology and kind of believe it more. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget if you want to check out your birth chart, I'm going to put the link below to the website that I used. It's pretty cool. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Got a little bit of knowledge out of astrology from it. I want to learn more. So we'll see where that goes. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Channel. Also follow my social media accounts. They are at the beginning of this video in the description box below or everything is at It's Kendra Sue. I hope you guys have an amazing day or night, whatever it is where you are right now, and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.